show your support. Follow me on Twitter. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome to my new booking video, specifically focusing on the return of Dean Ambrose. Now obviously he's been injured for quite a few months um, and he's still a little way away before he returns. So our story takes place um, sort of just after SummerSlam. Now at SummerSlam itself, uh, Seth Rollins, who at this point will be defending his IC title, actually loses it to Jason Jordan. And the Universal title match main event will be Brock Lesnar defending the Universal title against Roman Reigns, Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman. And Braun Strowman comes out victorious in that match as well. And that's pretty much the end of Brock Lesnar as well within the WWE at this moment. Now on the Raw after SummerSlam, obviously Seth wants his rematch for the IC title. And while he is sort of calling Jason Jordan out and getting that all finalised, we hear Dean Ambrose's music and he makes his return and he's very much sort of in Seth's corner and trying to gear him up for it. Um, and, but later on in the night we actually see a backstage skit um, where he's kind of talking about them taking over the, the tag team division again and, and regaining the title like they did this time last year. Um, but Seth's kind of waving that aside and is sort of saying, look, I, I need to be focused on my rematch. I, I haven't got time to be thinking about tagging or, or the sort of the tag belts or any of that. He, he needs to remain focused on the IC title and winning it back from Jason Jordan. Now that match goes ahead and Dean comes with Seth. Uh, Seth doesn't really particularly want or need him to but Dean feels like he should anyway because they're tag partners um, and towards the end of the match he there's sort of a bit of a miscommunication between the two of them and Dean sort of costs Seth the match Jordan is able to retain the IC title now the next week uh, this sort of leads into more arguments between Dean and Seth um, sort of really extending that whole Seth wanting to be a single star now and yes okay they kind of sort of reunited the shield last year but it was kind of uh, just in the moment really and, and almost sort of a nostalgia piece he since breaking away from them has been world champion he's been money in the bank winner he's been uh, an IC champion and is now because of that a Grand Slam champion he doesn't really feel like he wants to remain in a group or in a tag um, unit with Dean because uh, it's kind of holding him back. He needs to kind of break away from that again and, and find the successes that he found as a single star. Seth at this point tries to sort of go after Jordan and Dean is still sort of trying to hold him back and, and discuss the whole teaming thing um, and because of this Jordan is able to sort of blindside Seth and, and get uh, get one up on him again um, and now we're sort of really seeing the tensions build between Dean and Seth. Now this leads into the following week basically by this point Seth has sort of had enough of Dean going on and on and on about it and agrees to team with him one last time just for old time's sake, it's kind of like, right, if you stop going on about it, and I agree to it this once, that will be the end of it, right? Um, so they have a match against the Authors of Pain, remember those guys, and part way through the match, um, Seth is sort of getting beaten down, and it's sort of the, uh, the hot tag moment, where you're expecting him to dive to the corner and tag Dean in, and then Dean kind of goes wild on the Authors of Pain, and just as he makes it into that corner, Dean drops from the apron and just walks off basically and this allows the Authors of Pain to easily um, sort of put the beat down on Seth and win the match. Now the following week Dean comes out and explains what was going on and he's sort of saying look Seth basically used everyone in the shield it was all his idea he used it as a, a way of coming up to the main roster um, and to kind of highlight himself he was then the one that ended everything so that he could go off and become a single star uh, and then when it sort of suited him he 
approached Dean last year to try and reform everything because he wasn't getting any successes anymore as a single star. And then obviously they became tag team champions. Then as soon as Dean got injured, he just started tagging with Jason Jordan instead just so that he could retain the gold. And as soon as Jason Jordan got injured, Seth basically dropped the whole idea like a lead balloon in order to pursue his own single stardom again. Uh, basically using everyone around him uh, so that he could get ahead. A slightly battered and bruised, taped up Seth Rollins comes out and tries to attack Dean, but Dean manages to escape and Seth sort of calls for a match at Hell in a Cell, in the Cell, uh, just to kind of see Dean off once and for all, in his mind at least, and Dean accepts this up on the ramp, so at Hell in a Cell, we will have Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. Um, and as you can tell, it's quite a sort of a personal match. Um, it's quite brutal. And towards the end, there is sort of a double down moment. And from under the ring, we see Cassius Ono. Um, and he comes uh, into the ring and lays out Seth Rollins and because of this Dean Ambrose is able to pick up the win and the two of them just beat down on Seth Rollins. Um, Roman Reigns comes to uh, ringside but obviously he can't get in because they're still confined within the cell um, and sort of is waiting for the cell to slowly be raised up while uh, Dean and Cassius are still beating down on Seth Rollins. By the time Roman is able to enter, they kind of scarper through the crowd um, and Roman has to sort of help with medical assistance, has to help Seth go out to the back. Um, and yeah, Dean and Cassius Ono managed to escape unscathed. On the Raw after Hell in a Cell, Dean and Cassius Ono come down to the ring to the old shield music, they've got the riot gear on, uh, they come through the crowd and Dean and Cassius explain that the shield was all Seth's idea, uh, sort of backing up what he said a couple of weeks ago of it basically being a vessel for uh, Seth Rollins and even Roman Reigns got caught up in that, he wasn't even meant to be in the shield. Um, it was meant to be Cassius Ono as the third member of the Shield, but Seth put pay to that because he was sort of intimidated and scared by Cassius Ono and didn't want to be outshone by him. So he sort of went to management and handpicked Roman Reigns himself um, because he felt that he could kind of use and manipulate him. And obviously that was seen in the fact that he turned on Roman and Dean immediately um, as soon as he could um, just to get ahead. Again Roman comes out to kind of try and defend Seth's honour almost because Seth is nowhere to be seen because of the attack from the night before but again Dean and Cassius manage to escape back through the crowd um, and escape any retribution. Now the following week Dean kind of tries to play up on all of Seth's um, recent singles um, successes and decides that actually he is going to be the new IC champion. He is going to challenge Jason Jordan to a match and Jordan shoots this down completely. He's like, well, you haven't done anything to earn it so there's no way I'm going to be defending my title against you. Because of a bit of management um, involvement, what they come to is an agreement of a non-title match and if Dean is able to win the non-title match then he will get uh, a title match. Dean is able to win that match so the following week on Raw we will get the title match for the IC belt Jason Jordan versus Dean Ambrose. Uh, obviously that takes place as I said the following week and uh, Dean is kind of getting one up on Jason Jordan until he attacks Dean Ambrose with a chair and uh, sort of battering him in the arm and it's at this point that Cassius Ono comes down to try and make the save but Jason Jordan sort of escapes so don't forget Jason Jordan is still being the heelish character this is sort of the the oddest part shall we say in terms of the booking because it's sort of heel versus heel but we're kind of having Dean almost be a tweener character by having his justifications with sort of Seth Rollins being the heel that broke up the shield from way before. 
is also a sort of short period um, in terms of the booking, um, and then we can get back to a proper face heel dynamic. So yes, yeah, so Jason Jordan attacks Dean Ambrose with the chair and escapes with the title belt. Now, the following week we have Cassius Ono and not Dean Ambrose come out, and he is demanding a match against Jason Jordan himself, um, just to get revenge really for what Jason Jordan did to Dean the previous week. Uh, Jason Jordan again refuses that and the Authors of Pain come out and Jason Jordan is kind of directing traffic and they uh, start attacking Cassius Ono with Jason Jordan, as I say, kind of playing cheerleader almost on the outside of the ring. It is at this point that a battered Dean Ambrose comes out to the ring, his arm heavily taped up and tries to kind of get one up on Jason Jordan. But Jordan manages to outsmart Dean Ambrose again and attacks his injured arm yet again with the chair, laying him out. And because of this, um, the Authors of Pain are also able to kind of lead the two-on-one attack on Cassius Ono. So both of those guys are completely laid out. And just to kind of put the full stop on it, the Authors of Pain drive Cassius Ono through the analysis table. Now, the general manager... Um, whether that be Kurt Angle or whoever, decides to make a match for TLC for the IC title, almost to sort of teach Jason Jordan a lesson. It will be him facing Dean Ambrose again in um, a tables match. And it's a very specific tables match um, because only tables are actually legal within the match. So that kind of nullifies Jason Jordan being able to use a chair within this because they're actually not legal and won't be a viable weapon for him to use. So at TLC, Jason Jordan comes out and Dean Ambrose comes out, but he announces that he wasn't able to be medically cleared to fight in the match. So Jason Jordan assumes that he sort of wins by no show, and Dean Ambrose announces his replacement for the match, Cassius Ono. And so Jason Jordan will have to defend his title against Cassius Ono. Cassius Ono manages to win quite handily, driving Jason Jordan through the table and becomes the new Intercontinental Champion. Now obviously with the whole Dean and Seth bits and pieces and Jason Jordan um, and even Roman Reigns kind of arguing with each other, uh, Braun Strowman, who don't forget at this point is still the Universal Champion, sort of decides to be the, the voice of reason here because we've got Survivor Series coming up and he demands unity from Team Raw. He will be leading Team Raw in the classic 5-on-5 five five match against SmackDown Live and he doesn't want there to be kind of uh, any issues in the team. He What he decides to do is kind of have various matches against and with certain members of the roster over the next few weeks and on the last Raw before Survivor Series, that is when he officially announces his other teammates for Team Raw against uh, SmackDown Live. And for that match, he decides to pick Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Now obviously being the bigger man, he knows he can kind of physically control those guys. He knows how tough they are as well, and the fact that they will go to any means in order to win the match for Raw. And that is why he decides on these particular partners. Uh, it is also announced, probably slightly earlier um, before Survivor Series, that Cassius Ono, the Intercontinental Champion, will have a champion versus champion match against whoever is the United States Champion. So at Survivor Series we have the 5-on-5 five five match and towards the end of the match Dean lays out Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn have already been eliminated from the match. Dean sort of eliminates himself almost, um, lays those two guys out and Smackdown are able to win the 5-on-5 five five match. Now, obviously, on the Raw after Survivor Series, this creates a lot of tension between him and Braun Strowman. And because of the numbers advantage, Dean and Cassius Ono are able to sort of get one up on Braun Strowman. And this leads to two matches at the next pay-per-view, Clash of Champions. Um, the tensions between Dean and Braun Strowman have escalated and they are having a universal title match. 
and also Cassius Ono will obviously be defending his Intercontinental title. And as they have been doing before, Dean and Cassius help each other to win their matches. So Cassius retains his Intercontinental title and then helps uh, Dean win the Universal title from Braun Strowman. Basically the only way really of getting that belt off of him because he is such a behemoth. Um, and it keeps him looking relatively strong still because he is beaten handily by uh, an established guy in Dean Ambrose who is a former world champion and the current intercontinental champion as well. Um, he sort of succumbs to the numbers game. Now this obviously leads to um, the sort of standard rematch at Royal Rumble and Dean is again able to overcome Braun Strowman because of Cassius Ono. We then see afterwards a little bit between Dean and Cassius sort of planning for the Rumble match itself for Cassius to win this um, so that Dean Ambrose doesn't have a proper threat for WrestleMania. Basically the idea is that because Dean has brought Cassius up from NXT and ensured that he has won Intercontinental Gold, um, he sort of owes Dean kind of at WrestleMania what the plan is for him to win the Royal Rumble and lay down for Dean essentially. And indeed he does enter the Royal Rumble at 24 and he is in the final three with Samoa Joe and the man who enters at number 17 in that Royal Rumble and that is Seth Rollins. He is back from uh, his injuries a few months out. Kind of needs a bit of a rest anyway in, in real terms. Um, also, obviously, in, in story terms, it uh, gives the crowd a very, very good excuse to miss Seth Rollins after a very, very good um, beginning of the year. And it just builds that tension between Dean and Seth a little bit more for Dean to come back and immediately uh, kind of lay out the arguably the most... Um, popular guy on the roster just to build up as much heat as is possible for Dean Ambrose. So yes, our final three are Seth Rollins, Cassius Ono and Samoa Joe and Seth Rollins is able to single-handedly um, remove Cassius Ono and then Samoa Joe from the match. He wins the Royal Rumble so he is going to WrestleMania 35 with the title opportunity um, and he immediately calls out Dean Ambrose um, saying that he will be facing him at WrestleMania for the Universal title. And obviously as Cassius Ono has not long been eliminated he's sort of slowly making his way back up to the ramp um, and as he gets to where Dean Ambrose is who is on the ramp Dean sort of lays into him and DDTs him on the rampway um, and just sort of leaves him lying there. Now on the Raw after the Royal Rumble, Cassius Ono sort of gets um, his own back on Dean. He manages to jump him, um, but he also finds out that he will be defending his Intercontinental title in the main event that night. Now again, it doesn't really matter who he's defending that against, um, but he's sort of looking like he's got things well in hand. Um, let's say it's someone like Finn Balor, so someone perfectly capable um, but Cassius has sort of been able to get the upper hand towards the end of the match. Um, but Dean Ambrose comes back and costs him the match and the belt. So Cassius Ono is no longer the Intercontinental Champion. Now Cassius Ono, not content with waiting until Elimination Chamber, demands his rematch the following week. And yet again, Dean costs Cassius the match and the belt. So the main focus um, at the moment is Dean versus Cassius. They're interfering in each other's matches and laying out referees. Um, and this is Seth Rollins' opportunity to sneak in in a ref shirt and basically call matches against Dean in, in this sense. He's helping Cassius win. He's ensuring that Dean doesn't win. Uh, thus slowly turning Cassius Ono into a face character because Dean is essentially supporting him and not Dean Ambrose. And at Elimination Chamber itself the match is signed for Cassius Ono to face Dean Ambrose for the Universal title and Seth Rollins will be the guest referee for the match. But he is told before the, uh, the match that 
if he refuses to call the match fairly, um, then he will be stripped of his title match at WrestleMania 35. And obviously Seth is slightly conflicted because obviously he wants to screw Dean out of the title, but he also wants to make sure that he wins the title so that Seth has the match against him. So he's, he's kind of a bit torn in the middle there, but knowing that his WrestleMania 35 opportunity is on the line as well, he calls the match as fairly as is possible and ultimately Dean manages to win against Cassius Ono and retain his universal title. So it will be officially Dean versus Seth at WrestleMania. Now in the Raw after Elimination Chamber, they are made to sign uh, an extension to their contract. Basically it's a hands-off uh, edition. They're not allowed to jump each other. They're not allowed to attack each other backstage. Um, they will not be having any matches against each other just in case things get a little bit out of control they won't even be in sort of tag or six man tag matches anything like that against each other in the build up to Wrestlemania so they are kept well apart from each other even though they're kind of either doing sort of guest commentary or just kind of lurking in each other's matches or watching on monitors backstage and between Elimination Chamber and Wrestlemania they both go on a winning streak um, beating all manner of opponents week after week after week, both of them wrestling every single week, but both of them keeping a keen eye on each other's matches. Obviously there are moments where they come face to face with each other in the ring, either at uh, post-match or just at promo sections, and it looks like one is going to start on the other, but obviously they both remember the contract. Basically, it says that if Dean attacks Seth, he will be stripped of the title, and if Seth attacks Dean, he will be stripped of the title match. Um, so, obviously, both of them have a lot riding on leaving each other alone until WrestleMania 35. So, of course, we come to WrestleMania 35. We have the main event for the Universal title, Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins finally after, what's this, about eight months worth of build from SummerSlam, from Dean's return to his kind of quick psychotic change to schooling Cassius Ono and having him as a henchman to the two of them having title belts together as this kind of two-man duo till that breaking up as well because Dean gets jealous of, of Cassius and kind of uh, sees him as a liability because of his uh, failure to win the Royal Rumble from Seth being laid out and making his return at the Royal Rumble and managing to win it is all built to this match and of course Seth Rollins manages to win the Universal title beats Dean Ambrose and leaves Wrestlemania with the belt confetti, pyro, cheers from the crowd Dean is laid out um, and they can kind of move forward into a bit more of a program properly one-on-one -on -one against each other because we kept them apart even though they've kind of been the overarching theme in this feud they they can then go forward akin to how they did a few years back when the face and heel dynamics were reversed where they were kind of facing each other on um, sort of a more regular process that is what we will then build to towards um, sort of summer 2019. So there we go. That is what I think WWE should do with Dean Ambrose when he returns. He gets um, a decent title run with the belt um, and a WrestleMania main event, which he's still yet to get. We see Seth Rollins crowned as the Universal Champion, finally, after not really being anywhere near it since its inception. Um, because of his injury and then because of various storyline issues uh, we get to see Braun Strowman as the Universal Champion as well uh, dethroning Brock Lesnar we get to call up Cassius Ono as well from NXT because he's not really doing anything there at the moment he gets a little bit of a run with a mid-card title we get a bit of nostalgic Shield references as well especially playing Cassius into that because after all he was meant to be in the Shield when they first debuted in 2014 <coughs> And going forward, we will get to see uh, one of the best one-on-one -on -one feuds that we've seen 
uh, in recent times with Seth and Dean. We get to see that played out again, but obviously slightly differently this time because the face and heel dynamic is reversed. So there we go. What do you think of me booking Dean Ambrose's return? Please let me know in the comments below and join the discussion there. Of course, you can also follow me on Twitter at Rightly Wrongly and find me on Facebook as well, that British guy 86 Please also check out my other booking videos and indeed my other videos on the channel. Give it a like and a subscribe and if you'd be so kind. I will see you very soon, but until then, I've been that British guy.